This is the top 10 golf farms of the week. Let us begin. Starting off at number one, we have the Crusader Enchant. Located within the Eastern Plague Lands, what you're gonna be wanting to do is head all the way over toward the Eastern side of the map. This is because there will be a load of Scarlet-esque soldiers in that side of the zone, and they have a chance not all of them, but only the Scarlet Archmages have a chance of dropping the Crusader enchant. At a 1.5% drop chance, this is incredibly hard to get a hold of, however this recipe does tend to sell rather well. On the average, it's roughly anywhere from around about 20 to 50,000 gold for this enchant. This is one of those recipes that can sell for a decent chunk of gold and is Pretty dang good gold farm, if I do say so myself. Has a lot of these Scarlet Guards in this particular area, doing a loop around the entire area, taking out all of the mobs, not specifically going for the Scarlet Archmages. By the time you've done a full loop, the rest of them will have reset, and thus you can keep killing mobs. You can pick up a wide variety of different types of old school transmog from this area as well to pad out your auction house, but along with that you can also get a lot of different types of cloth to go along with this while farming for this enchant. They also have on their loot table the other schematic for the parachute cloak, the white bandit mask, the dazzling mithril rapier, and the polished steel boots, along with the limited invulnerability potion. This goes as follows with a load of other different types of items such as like the robes of insight which is a nice transmog item to sell on the auction house to go along with that. Overall this is one of my picks for this week, it's an incredibly good gold farm if you can actually stick with it and do an entire, at least an entire hour's worth of farming for this. Following on to this at number two is the Dark Welpling Gold Farm. Now this one is primarily a very decent gold farm in relation to battle pets as you can gain quite a few of these within about an hour's worth of farming. You can get anywhere from around about what two to three of these battle pets and the average going price for this is anywhere from 20 to 60,000 gold for one of these battle pets. Be sure to double check your auction house when you're actually farming this up, however the best farming location for this is the one located within the Badlands, within the top left side of the actual map. You'll be wanting to farm up the Nixondra's Broodlings, these are very plentiful in this particular region of this entire map and they have a 0.8 chance of dropping this battle pet but given the actual amount of these mobs by the time you've taken out all of them they will have started to force respawn this is a force respawn gold farm and it's very very good to do actually do this with a group as the more people that can slay it the more force respawn and so on and so forth bringing in more gold as you would if you were to solo it like in this footage right here. The thing to mention when it comes towards the Dark Broodling, they tend to sell a little bit slower than average, however I always try to keep at least two on the auction house at any one given time, and by the time I go down to about one or zero, then I'll farm up another two or three of these and then keep listing them to the auction house just so I have a nice stockpile on the auction house of these high value battle pets so once I gain a sale I've got another one backed up and it's ready to get sold again and again and again. It's one of those gold farms that is a high ticket item but you don't do it all the time you just farm up a ton of them and then you just post a certain amount on the auction house to try and not sink the value too much. That being said, at number three we have the Yormonger Scales. Located somewhat in the centre of the actual map, you'll be wanting to find the big old cave that is in the zone. As you can see on the map right here, this is where you're going to be wanting to go. What you'll be doing is you'll be going into the actual cave and farming up all of the mobs. There are some actual wolves within here and make sure that you bring a skinner as this is a skinning specific gold farm. You'll be able to pick up a load of Northrend-esque meats along with Borean leather, arctic fur and the Yormonger scales. These work out really really well when it comes towards sales as this is a very 
specific item for Old World Crafts from Northrend or Wrath of the Lich King and can be used to make some high-end transmog. These fetch a pretty penny on the auction house and as far as I can tell not many people can actually cover this gold farm but yet yeah, it really works incredibly well especially if you're trying to gain a decent chunk of gold overall. Now currently this one isn't actually within worth it however and necessary data is required. If as a side note you do go ahead and do this gold farm as well as myself I can add that to my logs as well as yours and we can update worth it with this gold farm as more data the better average gold per hour we can gain for the materials received. Going on to that at number four is the Throne of Thunder raid. Now this one is a keynote one because it can fetch you in a stupidly high amount of gold. This gives you more battle pets than anything, however you do get a load of Zandalari transmog to go along with this. You can either do this through the raid finder or you can just go to the Isle of Thunder and go in yourself. I prefer to go to the Isle of Thunder, however in this footage I just went to the raid finder as I just wanted to showcase it. Being said, the items of note that you're going to be getting from this is the Pygmy Diahorn currently selling at around about 15,000 gold, the Living Sandlin, which is worth nothing because it's around about 20 gold, the Jacoon Hatchling around about 2,420 gold, the Living Fluid 47,000 gold, the Vicious Horror 7,900 gold and the Son of Animus currently going for around about 15,000 gold. Pygmy Diahorn and the Living Fluid are your keynote items so I would head over and make sure you take out those two bosses and try and get a hold of these ones. This is because those ones can fetch a pretty penny on the auction house, however if you level them up to level 25, pretty much most of them besides the living sandling, then you'll be able to sell that on the auction house for a little bit more gold than as you would. You can take advantage of this by using squirt day or super squirt day to power level your battle pets and save up a nice stockpile to keep on the auction house. Which brings me into my next gold farm which is the Razorfen Downs. Now I like to always cover at least a raid and or a dungeon for the week and this one is no exception to the rule. The Razorfen Downs is a great transmog gold farm and that is because the Quillward Harness for 5,000 gold, the Death Head Vestment 600 gold, the the Thought Cast Boots 500 gold, the Corpse Shroud 1500 gold, the Briere's Treaders 29,000 gold, the Storm Gale Fist 23,000 gold, the Quill Shooter 12,000 gold, the Ebony Bone Club 17,000 gold, Bone Slasher 17,000 gold, and Manslayer for 207,000 gold as well as the Freezing Shard, which is around about 998 gold. That is a sizable chunk and a nice little bit of a variation of a difference. Razorfen Downs is a keynote gold farm for padding out your auction house when you're trying to get in with Transmog, and it's one of my top picks if you wanted to get started with Transmog, as it has a wide variety of low end and medium end, all the way up to some high end, like the Manslayer, and you can get a decent amount of gold from this. Remember transmog doesn't sell nearly as fast as like materials and if you're trying to get into that market and think you're going to get massively rich then you're most likely not thinking it in the long term. Long term with transmog you do win, it just takes more setup, more time and a little bit more practice getting into the flow of things. However, the Raise Fen Downs is my top pick for the dungeon because it provides you with so many different types of items and appearances. Which brings me on to the Sunken Temple. Now, this is maybe a little bit of a cop-out, but I wanted to talk about Sunken Temple due to the fact that it is, provides two different types of gold farms in one. The Sunken Temple can be done with around about 20 minutes. I do this quite regularly because I'm usually quite tight for time, yet I love gold farming. And the Sunken Temple provides that nice quick gold farm that I can do to still keep stuff on the auction house. However, I can still provide a mass amount of value towards my auction house as well as doing my baseline crafts every day. This is also known as the Temple of Atal Hakar within the Swamp of Sorrows. Items of note that you gain from this is if you bring a Skinner you're going to be able to get a hold of the green dragon scales, the worn dragon scales and also a load of the different types of levers. It, as a side note you're also able to boost 
or power level your classic skinning by doing this within around about three lockouts you'll be able to get the hit max level on your skinning and that requires you 20 minutes a piece so it's around about an hour if you compile that all together other items that you gain from this is the Stealth Blade going for around about 123,000 gold, the Soul Catcher Halo for 95,000 gold, the Mist Walker Boots 4,000 gold, the Merc Water Gauntlets 10,000 gold, Silver Shell Leggings currently going for 7,000 gold, the Winter's Bite 13,000 gold, Death Blow 5,000 gold, Rage Hammer 10,000 gold and the bludgeon of the grinning dog 20,000 20, gold as well as the stinging bow for around about 8,000 gold. Overall it has a nice variety of different types of transmogs as these ones are really really unique in the sense of like just gaining some decent appearances and they fetch a high value because of this. As well as it being a quick easy gold farm that in order to do, I don't know why more people don't do it with a skinner and then be able to get regular gold with those materials along with padding out your auction house with those high value transmogs. I'd pair this alongside like Razorfen Downs like do 10 hours of each or 10 lockouts per each because they roughly take a decent amount of time in order to do however the amount you can actually gain from this is quite high. Overall the Stealth Blade is your keynote item 123,000 gold that's brilliant and the sell rate on it is that is actually a very high for this particular type of transmog so I'd highly recommend checking this one out. Which brings me on to number seven which is the Serpent Shrine Caverns. Now Serpent Shrine Caverns is a nice little raid from TBC and can fetch you in a decent amount of gold. Things of note that you can actually gain from this is three different types of battle pets which is the Coil Fang Stalker 6,000 gold, the Tainted Waveling 993 gold, the Tide Skipper around about 4,000 gold. Obviously the keynote item are the Coil Fan Stalker and also the Tide Skipper. However, the Tainted Waveling comes from the very first boss, so that is quite self evident that you're going to be able to get a hold of that one more frequently, and that's why it doesn't go for as much gold. However, by doing this, at the end of the raid, the last boss, Lady Vash, has a chance of dropping the Coil Fan Stalker. As well as farming up all of the raid, you have a chance of looting a load of different types of items. If you run in with a herbalist you can herb the bog, big bog things that are just walking around the zone giving you primal life as well as TBC herbs and along with that you can also mill those into their respective inks to fetch more gold FYI. As well as the battle pets you also have a chance of getting a hold of some rare recipes because it's a TBC raid and they are equipped to the loot table so you have a chance of getting things like the Felsteel Longblade, the Reaper, all that stuff and that works out to be a very nice little quick gold farm as I can pretty much do this within around about the 7 odd minutes if I'm being lazy or not if you know what I'm saying. Other than that, it's a simple gold farm that you can do each and every week for very little time and it can provide you with some decent amount of gold. One thing to do I would mention is to level up your Coil Fang Stalker. If you get one to level 25 then sell it on. It tends to sell for a hell of a lot more than it usually would. So I definitely, so I definitely recommend doing that. Coming in at number 8 we have the Turtle Scale Gold Farm. Located within the Swamp of Sorrows you're going to want to be wanting to take your Skinner. Maybe after the Sunken Temple you'll want to check out this Gold Farm. What you're going to be wanting to do is head towards the southeastern side of the map near the coastline you'll find a massive ring of turtles. By the time you've actually looped around slaying all of them and skinning them, I mind you, you'll be able to have them back up again. This is really handy for when you're actually farming this up because there will always be turtles to slay as well as they'll provide you with the turtle scales which are used for the creation of some old school transmog which you can sell on the auction house either crafting them into their respective transmog or selling the scales on the auction house as well as well as a load of different types of leathers to go along with this they also have a chance of dropping the clams which those clams can hold 
a load of different types of pearls which go for some seriously good gold. I don't know why more people don't just flip for those golds because I just buy out a load of clams off the auction house and then I just flip them and then I get some decent gold but that being said the clams do actually sell in the auction house as well for a sizable amount of gold to go along with this. I find this to be incredibly helpful especially when I'm trying to make some decent gold and overall I find this to be really handy in the grand scheme of things. Following on to that at number 9 we have the Cinderbloom and Obsidian Ore Gold Farm within Mount Haijiao. What you're going to be wanting to do is make sure that you have herbalism in respectively cataclysm, herbalism and mining. You'll be wanting to fly around pretty much the entirety of the actual zone skipping over the fire bit this is because there's not many of those nodes in that particular area and you really want to go for the cinder bloom and the obsidian ore as well as there's a couple of pockets of Ajara's Veil vale, which does pad out quite nicely um, this one is just a really simple gold farm in order to do you just farm for the materials and you sell them on the auction house however cinder bloom and obsidian ore does to send to sell a lot better than their counterparts like elementium ore go along with that as they're used in a wide variety of different other crafting reagents as a load of different types of crafting reagents and they just send, tend to sell better in my own opinion that being said this just is just a very simple gold farm and i like to produce one and talk about one each and every week just because it's more simplistic there's no high end like oh you gotta get these paddle pets to level 25 you gotta go do some hoops and jumps no nope. just have cataclysm herbalism and mining and just go farm it it's a very simple gold farm in order to do and within about an hour's worth of gold farming you'll be able to get a decent amount of gold to go along with this Following off at number 10 and the last gold farm that I want to talk about is the Golden Main. What you're going to be wanting to do is make your way over towards the Mariner's Strand in Stormsong Valley. Primarily you want to do this with a group, however you can do this solo. As you can see here on the screen, I'm running around slaying all of the mobs. This is because these guys can actually force respawn, so by the time you've slain all of them, they will start force respawning. They all have a different type of chance of dropping the golden main reins, which for me is currently going for around about 244,000 gold. Now, primarily this is a very hard to drop mount, however this can pay off really big in the long run, especially if you can get yourself a group together and you guys just mass farm this thing. You can get one in every one to two hours of gold farming and if you put that to an hourly rate that works out quite well. However I have had reports that RNG has not been favourable to some people and they've been farming for a good while so do take this one with a pinch of salt. However this does pay off quite big if you're willing to take the risk. Other than that that is everything I want to talk about for the week. If you want any other additional types of gold making videos, guides or gold making resources like my TSM profile then please feel free to go check out the Patreon. Other than that have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be soon.